there were some things about the novel itself that made adapting it less of an obstacle than you might think. Even though it's an epic and it, it covers 30 chapters, only 15 of those 30 chapters are about the Jodes. The other 15, the alternating chapters, are sort of landscapes, uh, panoramic views. So I knew that I could dispense with most of the wide angle shots and focus on those 15 chapters that tell the story of the Jodes. For instance, the car salesman, which was a way of introducing the jalopy that the Jodes buy and use to drive all the way to California. That is established in one of the general chapters where you hear all these car salesmen uh, in a kind of uh, chorus of voices pitching these old jalopies to the poor people who need them. Used cars, good used cars, cheap transportation, used cars, you know. And you, you hear about 10 or 12 different car salesmen. And the idea was not only that they would set the, some of these general chapters to use as kind of hinges between the dramatic scenes, but that they would also function, that the music would function like the engine that drives the truck. So that music itself was a kind of propelling energy. I think Steinbeck, who was very interested in the theater, he loved the theater. I learned later from Mrs. Steinbeck, she became a very good friend, that um, you know, he would have really been excited by the prospect of compressing a story like The Grapes of Wrath and letting it live out its life in stage time on the stage. So it became a really, really exciting process. I knew once we were in rehearsals that I had to get the Jodes to California by the end of the first act. <laughs> I mean, that was a tough job, but I realized that if I didn't get them there by the intermission, that I would never complete the whole story. I must say, the, the entire section of the novel involving the flood, the, the, uh, the swelling of the river, the flooding of the land, the Jodes huddling in this horrible boxcar where Rose of Sharon delivers her baby. Um, it, it is so resonant with the natural disasters and catastrophes that are happening now and have been happening in recent years all over the world. I mean, from tsunamis to you know the floods of the Mississippi River, tornadoes, hurricanes. I mean, the, the magnitude of human suffering seems only to increase. And when you have artists of the stature and, and maturity and, and skill of the, of the acting ensemble here at Stratford, led by a director like Anthony Cimolino. I mean, you have something, I mean, the, the story reaches a kind of level of expressiveness that's uh, truly profound and very, very moving and inspiring to me.